You're watching Pegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. Good afternoon, folks, and welcome to another edition of An Hour with Bob, and happy summer, I guess. A little warm for me today. It's like 90 degrees out in this uh, beautiful July 10th day. And with me today is an old friend, and he runs the group called Ryle, and we're going to talk about that, and his name is Terry Gorman. And Terry, how you doing? Good, nice Bob. Nice to see how you again. Nice to see you again, It's too. always good to have yeah. you here. It's been about six months of... Maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Always a pleasure to get to be your show. You know, so it always turns out interesting. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ryle is what? Rhode Island is Rhode for Island legal is for immigration law enforcement. Oh, for oh, that's what it, Rhode Island is for immigration law enforcement. enforcement yeah. Oh, we started in two thousand and six, and our main mission was to have the laws. Of immigration laws that are already on the books right. enforced. And unfortunately, we haven't been successful in getting that done because you see the conditions that we're experiencing today. And if the laws were enforced since 19, that were in, put in in 1986, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have the problem we have today. Just enforcing the existing the ex laws. The existing laws. The existing laws. You know, it's just one law, one thing that I think is so obvious, and I can't imagine that the pr Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce is, is opposed to this, is E-Verify. It's just, and they didn't have that then. We tried to, we tried to get it put in. But the, uh, in 2000, 2009, I approached them, and they said no, they were in favor. The Greater of Providence yes. Chamber? Yep. And what e all E-Verify does is it requires an employer to submit a name right. to a national database to see if of a person that they already hired, not somebody that they're waiting to hire, right. someone they already hired to see if they're eligible to work in the United States or not. Well, I can see why they wouldn't yeah. want to do it. Yeah. yeah. Because and they've already hired them. Yeah. And but if they find out they're in that database, yeah, then they have to get rid of them. Right. Yeah. And what the, what we already had the I-9 form, which says it's against the law to hire an illegal alien. So if somebody shows up and I defy these employers to tell me, oh, I didn't think it was, I didn't think he was an illegal, I thought he was okay and everything. Right. And, you know, the guy doesn't speak English, doesn't speak, hardly speaks English, and he's will, willing to work for $4 an hour, seven days a week with no overtime. <laughs> and the guy's going to tell me that he doesn't think he's illegal, you know. Well, I mean, and, they, and they say that the, the, the rich people are the ones that use the illegal immigrants oh, well, a for lot, their plants. A, a lot of them do. Plantations and oh, their, yeah. Oh, yeah. Their, their farms and whatever, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. But, and they use and them then, as housemaids and right. babysitters. And yep. Hollywood is full of it. I mean, Nancy Pelosi, had, her, her husband has a 1,200-acre 12, vineyard, I think. And he has almost that many illegal alien employees. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> interesting. <Yeah. laughs> but try to get something done about it, Bob. You know, the, it, be, besides talking about it. You know, it's. Right. Uh, but you, we have to keep talking. I, you know, I keep threatening to say, I've had it. I'm going to give up. It's a, a lost cause. But I just can't. I just can't crawl under the carpet and go away. I just can't. I just. Oh, sorry about this. I thought I turned this phone off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, have, 
I should do that to mine. I my, did turn it off, but I don't know why. I, it, my, it's not. I apologize, but my my phone. It's the Kentucky Derby call to the post is. Oh yeah. <laughs> is my. It says off. They keep saying off. Excuse me, folks. Yeah, no, mine should be off. Yours is off too now. No. I'm glad it was yours. That, that was my banker. And yeah. Not mine. <laughs> I'm joking, that too. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the problem with uh, uh, going by the law? What is the problem with enforcing I, it? I just, I don't know. I've never been able to figure that out since we started. If you talk about enforcing the laws, it's like people want to run the other way. Right. You know, I, I, I'm on Facebook. I put things on Facebook all the time. And if you read the, read the newspaper, I have a, a box, a cardboard box. I, well, it's probably probably could go this high right. with newspaper articles, and the newspaper articles are all this person raped this girl, right. this person was killed somebody in an accident, all illegal aliens, all illegal aliens. And I now I put on Facebook when I read these reports. Sorry for not being politically correct, but I wonder what their immigration status is. And I'm only going by the name. Right. Or a picture, yep. and I say what their immigration status is, and I get highly criticized for, for saying that. But it turns out, I mean, I have a personal experience with these people, in that you one of the these drug people, no, one, one these of people. the drug dealers that was an illegal alien. Yep. He had already been deported. Right. Came back into this country, started up his drug dealing business. Got arrested and sent to jail for drug dealing. Got out of jail, got arrested and sent to jail in Rhode Island. Well, when he got out of jail, didn't they deport him? No, no. no. Uh, let me just tell you what happened. What, what kind of stuff? No, happened. this. Wait a minute. This was after he was deported once. Yes. Yep. And he came to Rhode Island. I don't know if he's from Rhode Island or not, but he, he was in Rhode Island anyway. And he started up another drug ring. And he got caught. And he was arrested on drug and gun charges and sent to the ACI, right? ACI here. I think he spent four years in the ACI. When it came time for, to get out, they let him out the back door of the ACI with ICE waiting for him on the front door. Really? Yeah, that's the law. That's a law in Rhode Island. That's a policy put in by Governor Chafee. Can't cooperate with ICE. Oh, so, th so that it was a sanctuary state when it was yeah. Chafee, right? Yeah. So is that the way it is now? Yes. Yep. So now he's out. While he's out, he gets caught again 16 months later. Now he went to jail. Now he's going to get deported. But during that 16 months, he had 27 runners working for him wow. in Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. 27. He lived in Cumberland, by the way. 27 people working for him. And during that period of time, in Rhode Island alone, 336 people died of opioid overdoses. Wow. Now, I know every one of them isn't attributable to that guy's drug rate. Right. But I would venture to say a portion of probably 80%, because he had the biggest drug ring in the not in New England, but in the, in southern New England, twenty seven runners giving them, you know selling the delivering the drugs and selling the drugs. And I have a granddaughter that happened to be die of an opioid overdose, accidental opioid overdose during that period of time. Wow. Hmm. Yep. And she was given what she thought was she they've been drinking with some friends. Right. And she was given what she thought was a half a Percocet. And it was fentanyl. And what, what my question, on. by the way, my question about that is, why would they want to give somebody something that it, what, it's bad for business, isn't it? Well, I don't think it ever gets goes back to the guy that sold it to them. I really, I really don't. I don't, I don't understand that either. If if out on the street, people are, then, but they're not afraid, Bob. I guess they they want to do it. The desire to do it overwhelms what right. the dangers of right. it are. Right. You know. Then but in her case, in her case, the guy that 
gave the her that supposed half of her cassette and her. He had to, he took the other half. Oh no! Yeah. And nothing happened to him. Really? But he didn't. He w he w wasn't the distributor of it. Right. And in that particular. But everybody's affected by drugs. In oh a yeah, way. yeah. I mean, just uh, you know, come on. I mean, it, I, that happens to be my my sad story. But there's wow. other people out there. We we've gone to different times, you know, to to recognize these poor people that have died. And in in Rhode Island, there's three families. One family lost two daughters. One family lost two sons. One family lost two sons and a daughter. Holy All separate God. families to that to, to thing, and they have a vigil every year. Yep. Where they go and you know they, they sing hymns and stuff like that, and pray for the people that have been taken, and you know it's a it, it's a sad situation, you know that that we have. It just doesn't seem like we do en we like we do enough, you know. If 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 they could trace that those that fentanyl back to the guy that sold it, right, to the guy that used it with my granddaughter. That guy should go to jail forever, right? Because he's killing people. Exactly. He, they're killing people. And what kind of a person do you know? I don't think I ever met one in my life that would be willing to sell you something that he knows can kill you. I, that's what I'm saying. Make, just to make twenty bucks. Right. That's why I'm saying it doesn't even make any business sense, yeah. let alone anything else. Yeah. To yeah. do that. Yeah. But th but that's that's a whole different aside. That's a whole different area. You know, it's. Uh, he just happens to be an illegal alien, and subsequently to that, that it's been I, I believe twice there's been other drug dealers who are illegal aliens that have been arrested in Rhode Island, and w and one of the, one of them was deported once too. And they and get back they, in here. They, they get back they, in the they country come, they real come real back. easy. Yep. And and it's the policy, it's the, the state policy that they refuse to cooperate with ICE. See, I didn't realize it was a state policy. Yep. Yeah, I know state, it is in Providence. Yeah, I know state, it's, no, it's a state policy for the for the ACI to cooperate with ICE. So theoretically, what they're doing is that ICE puts in a detainer, they they won't honor it. Right. So ICE has to figure out. They say ICE has all that information. Well, ICE has all the information they need except the when day they're the, leaving. The day the person's going to get out of the prison. Right. And what door he's going out. You know, <laughs> and that what, wow. what what I think they should what I think I should do is put send somebody to all the uh, doors, exits. All, all the exits. Well, but and then they got to know what date he's getting out yeah, too. Yeah, well, that, but that's that that's another thing. I think that's a, that's in some sort of a record somewhere that that ICE would have privy to that knowledge, the day that they're going to get out. But I mean, there's so many things you know with the illegal aliens. You have a judge that's up on charges now, hearing a, hearing a state trooper or a state prosecutor, the guy the guy was supposed to be turned over to ICE yeah. when he got convict when he got where is this where was in this? Massachusetts, and it's it's been in the news and everything. The judge and the prosecutor conspired to let the guy to delay ICE and let the guy go out the back door of the court courthouse. You know I. That stuff is so. We, we have a, a woman in Congress now, who's sending her staff to Mexico to visit the asylees, people that have been uh, uh, claimed asylum, right, and been sent to Mexico to right. await their determination. Oh, to, to bring them back. She was bringing them across no, the border. No, she was. She was sending her staff down there to educate the people how to beat the system, how to get to the head of the line. And Cory Booker was down there, went down there and got five, five oh, illegal was, aliens. Yeah. He brought them across the border. Bringing them across the border. Yeah, I saw so that. that. To me, that's treason. That, that, I mean, come on. And who, how do they, how does Cory Booker know who those five people are? You know, suppose one of them comes, it says, my name's Juan Gonzalez, and his name is really Bin Laden. You know, I mean, how does Cory Booker know? Right, right. You know, I mean, and, and they're doing that. And then... Trump, whether you like him or hate him or whatever you want, that whatever he tries to do, he's thwarted oh, they do the by opposite. Congress yeah. and the courts. And, and, and something that I think you would agree with me on, and I think most people do, would too, except the, the extreme left, the court system in the United States, I do not believe was ever made in the Constitution 
to allow a judge in the Ninth District Court in California, the most liberal court right. in the country, to That's dictate. That's in San Francisco, right? Yeah, yeah. To dictate how all of the 300 million people in the United States are going to live their lives. Right. I just don't believe that was the intention, and and but that's what we're going by now, and it happens in the ninth district court, the fifth district court, the, or everywhere, that if Trump puts something in to try to straighten a s certain situation out, like the, the problem on the border right now, can't do it. Well, it's amazing to me what that is. The president of the United States has access to all kinds of information. Yeah. He has a full cabinet. He makes a decision based on that cabinet yep. and all, all the information he's got. Yet a judge, by himself or herself, yep. can ch override the all decision of that, he makes. All that information and executive orders and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, does it make any sense that Barack Obama, whether you liked him or hated him, put in a, uh, an executive order for deferred action for childhood arrival, the DACA program? an executive order. So he put it in. And it's supposed to expire in two years. Right. Now President Trump is the president. He puts in an executive order to override the previous executive order, because it's got to expire in two years after the two years anyway. And the courts stopped him from doing that. Why, why is that? Why, uh, why should they, if, the, if it went to the Supreme Court in the Supreme Court rules, President Trump couldn't do it. Then right, that's we different. live with it. Right. That's a different right. story. But if one person, well, we got to get it to the Supreme. They got to get it to the Supreme yep. Court. One person, man or woman, for their own, per in my opinion, for their own personal gratification and their own opinion, can stop the entire United States from doing something. Because that's by by stopping President Trump. That's that's basically what they're doing to the right. rest of us. Right. You know, it's, it, I don't think that's right. I, don't, I just don't think it's right. By the way, yeah. how, many, how many people did, did Obama send back to Mexico? Or back it, it, to it says he sent back 485,000, more than any other president in the history of the United States. So why are they all up in arms about but, how many people? Well, um, that, that doesn't Trump. make any sense whatsoever. No, I mean. Because he hasn't sent back that many, has no, he? No, no. And Obama, Obama was the first person to build the, at the cages, as they call them, to detain the children and separate them from their parents. Obama did really? that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you just made me think of something that it, it just I, it just slipped my mind about. Uh, oh, because it's amazing. Well, well, I do understand why. Because Trump is so. His his tweets just kill me. His yeah, late yeah, night I, tweets, yeah, his I, arrogance. His, I don't I mean, agree with that. He's killing either. himself and yeah. he's killing the country yeah. with, with, with what he's yeah. doing. If he was a little more subtle, and they, they said he was the great deal maker, yeah. he, he, he's the great pisser offer at yeah. what he is. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, don't disagree, I don't disagree with that. I think, uh, you know, uh, my, my wife cringes when, when they put up those the tweets Tweet, that he says, yeah. you know, and the things that he Gosh, says. Gosh, my God. Things that he says. Three o'clock in the morning. And, yeah. and we'll all, oh. we all could, could think of something at 3 o'clock in the morning, and at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning, we, we would think differently yeah. about it. Yeah. Getting, I thought of it. But getting back to Obama, when you asked about the de deportation, one of the things that nobody says, and I don't know why they don't bring these things up. I mean, I, I can point it out to you in documentation. Obama deport, claimed as being deported people who were stopped at the border and not allowed in. He claimed that as deportation. Hundreds of thousands of people, he claimed on people as being deported. They were stopped from coming right. in. Right, they never get in. They never get in. They stopped from coming in, and his administration said that they were deported and counted that towards the big count so they, they can say that he technically, you know, I don't know why even technically, that he deported more people than any other president in history. You know, that does it, this is just, what's killing us is the far left and the media is what's killing us. Right. And the media is basically going along with whatever the far left 
Well, they proved that. They, they proved that when when the president just had his Fourth uh, of July celebration. Yeah. Yeah. None of the networks carried it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like telling yeah. them right out. Yeah. But it, I I just don't know anymore. You know, I mean, I could. It, we, I laughed when you when you said, "Do you think we can do an hour?" Because you didn't have another guest. But we could do a week. We could do a week. I mean, it's that it's that bad. You know, look. What kind of a country do we live in? And I'll get in trouble for this. But this US women's soccer team. Now, I actually called up and couldn't get a definitive answer of who funds the US women's soccer team. Right. And, but I think it's a soccer federation and yeah, FIFA. Yeah, 501c3. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it, it's, at least it's not the federal government that, that f finances them. But that girl. Rapino, that refuses to sing the national anthem, knelt down for the national anthem. Right. F Trump, and not going to the F in White House. Right. And she said she s surveyed most of the rest of the team, and they're gonna they'll refuse to go to the White House also. That That's sad. Is sad, sad, sad. And for the press to be coming out and supporting her, like, you know. She stands for what women stand for today and blah, blah, If my daughter was a soccer player, I'd, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. But if she, was if she was saying F the president and F going to the White House, I'd be talking to her and saying, listen, lady, you know, this is the United States of America. This is why you, you have a right to say things. Right. But you can't say it th the way you're saying it. You can't disparage the United States and disparage the president of the United States, whether you like them or you don't like them. And now, now what it's become, and this is offensive to me too, it's become the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender issue. That's what it's all about now. Right. It's more so than anything else because the, uh, there are, I guess, a lot of lesbian women on the soccer team and the coach is a lesbian. This Rapino is uh, supposedly a lesbian, and I just wrote on Facebook today, what's next? Is she, is she gonna change her name to Martin, for Megan, and try to play on the men's soccer team? You know, go take some testosterone and whatever and try to play on the men's soccer team? What's, what would happen then? <laughs> and is she, she's sticking up for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community. Now, more power to her for doing that. Whatever. I don't want to kill any of them, or I'm not, you know, that kind of a bigot or whatever. But my question about that is: ten years ago in Rhode Island, you can check on any of this that I'm saying. Ten years ago, it was the Rhode Island Gay and Lesbian Alliance. Right. I would say, venture to say, that 90 percent of the people that would talk about the Rhode Island Gay and Lesbian Alliance would have accepted it. 10% of the people aren't gonna accept it no matter what you do, period, end of story, they're hardcore, they're gonna hate it no matter what you do. Right. But I would say 90% of the population accepted that. Let's move on. We move on to five years, it becomes the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community. Well, now bisexual and transgender were added in that five-year period, so now that's something new that right. we're supposed to, supposed to respect. Fine and dandy, let's do that. I have some reservations, but let's say we, <laughs> let's say, let's say we, Where are we, you going with we this? accept <laughs> that. Right now, today, as we speak, it's the gay that's let me think for a second. Gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, polysexual, pansexual, and kink community. Really? All of those initials are in their name. You know what's missing? Name. Huh? You, you know what's missing there, don't you? What you'll be next? You know what? Pedophilia. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean already. Man, people, boy, or whatever yeah. they call that. Already, pe people are, are trying to, uh, in the medical profession or psychiatric profession, I guess, 
are trying to say that they want pedophilia to become a sexual orientation. <laughs> uh, where are we going? What, what are we doing? You know, I, I, I hate to say it this way, I, and I just put this on Facebook today too. And I put it on, on one person, I sent a message of a response to one person and Facebook took it down. And that made me angry. I mean, I don't know how well, to what find the hell, out about What did you say that they took it down? Something really simple. Plea to this person I wrote. And, and since then I wrote a, a statement on Facebook and it's still up there. But to this person, I wrote, please Google the Cloward Piven theory, C-L-O-W-A-R-D dash Piven, P-I-V-E-N. What is that? That's a theory that some psychiatrists and college professors put together years ago about ways to get rid of the United States. And what, it, what they said was, and, and stop oh, and from think within, of this. from within, of yes, course. Yes, yep. Stop and think of this. That's how they got rid of the, That's how they got rid of or ended the Roman Empire yeah. from within. Yes. That it, they say what they need to do is to overwhelm all of our systems, the welfare and you know right. whatever they can tr get medical care and all that stuff. Overwhelm the systems until the systems totally fail. And once the systems have totally failed, yeah, but rebellion will be. Uh, once they failed, yep. the government will provide everything for everyone, so we'll be socialists. The oh. government will provide everything for everyone, because all of those things—the welfare, the registry of motor vehicles—stop and think of it: voting, registry of motor vehicles, all these health care, all that stuff. That's what they, That's what's happening right now, right before our eyes. Is, is that they're overwhelming our system. The border is overwhelmed. The illegal alien situation in the, state, the United States is overwhelmed. Everything that we look at, the hospitals are overwhelmed. Schools are overwhelmed. Just stop and think. I mean, just look, look around. Why do you think we have the problems we have in Rhode Island with like three of the school systems in Rhode Island? That I, I blame it on a lot of things, but that's part of it is the, we're having to deal, and it's federal law, so I, Terry Gorman can't complain about it's a, if it's a federal law. Right. But we're required to educate any child residing on U.S. soil. That's what the law says, any child residing on U.S. soil. So that includes illegal aliens. So how does a community like Central Falls with 2,400 students, 2,200 and something students, how do they deal with an influx of 366 new students? According to the superintendent of schools, the majority of which don't speak English. Wow. How do they handle that? If they, if they get, that's more than 10% of the school population. Right. I mean, and Providence is even worse than that. In yeah, Pawtucket, Providence is totally disarray. Yeah. And Pawtucket isn't far behind. Right, right. You know, Central, Central Falls, is worse than Providence. You think? Yes, it, it's on the news today. Central Falls is worse, is worse than Providence. Th I think Providence is eight points higher. Or I think the eight points are three points higher than, than Central Falls, Pro the Providence schools in, right. their, in their testing and stuff. Yeah, well, they're, re they're reading and their, yeah. their math skills yeah. and whatever. Yeah. And I, I go back to when I was a kid. I can remember having, um, uh, a kid from another country come yep. into the school yep. and in our class and we're doing math and uh, you know they're going over an equation yep. where you know we got it okay what yep. on to the next one they go and the, the kid don't understand it so yep. they got to do it again yep. while we're sitting there waiting to go to the next one yeah and but uh, Bob multiply that times 365 half your class. But, but times half your class but, but you probably had 40 kids in your class yeah well, not anymore. No, no. But suppose, <laughs> four, suppose twenty of them had that problem, didn't understand the equation, have to do it, start over again. How long did it take to get the other twenty? Not one guy, right. you know, because most of the schools only had very minimal amounts of people that came from other countries. I mean, you just you just look at that, and, and my solution to that problem, and 
you know, again, I get criticized <coughs> severely for it. Separate him? Yes. Any child coming into the, a school in the state of Rhode Island, non-English speaking child, should be placed in a one-year English language immersion program. Now, we're required to educate them, so to me, that's a no-win situation. Educate them uh, uh, to, yeah. to English. The, Is that what you mean? Yeah. The parents of the student, the child, would be thrilled, I think, for their kid to go to a school for one year to learn English. Then he goes into the, matriculates into the regular classroom, and he's not holding the rest of the class back. Right. The American students, pa parents, student, student <coughs> parents, would be thrilled because they'd be no longer that holding people back. Right. So it's a win-win situation. I, I, even a Lawza, I met a Lawza downtown in Providence, and I said, "Can I?" You must be your you? favorite guy. Yeah. I said, "Can I ask you a question?" I said, "Can I ask you a question?" And I asked him if he didn't think that was a good idea. He said, I, I think that's a marvelous idea. Really? And now, now they're doing it a half a day, and some schools are successful doing it a half a day. But if you looked, if you looked into those schools that are successful, the, the advantages that they have right. are really tremendous. They're really tremendous well, advantages. Well, like a school system like Barrington, or East Greenwich. No, no, or North I, 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 no, I'm talking about like you know, charter schools and stuff like right. that. Right, oh that, yeah. That yeah. are doing really, really well. And one of the things, and I'm extremely disappointed, I won't say what school, but one of my grandchildren went to the school, very, very successful, graduated last year, got a full scholarship to Holy Cross. Wow. Yeah, his girlfriend got a full scholarship to Boston College. And they went to a charter school? They went to a charter school. But a person, one of my neighbors, their son's going to a charter school. And the mother said, for the first four years that we've been at the school, three years, I've been involved in parent organizations and stuff. And when they have meetings and things, the place is full. And 75% of the people are non-American. Really? That are in the room. Because they, it was mandatory parental involvement. Oh. Now the left has prevailed, right. and there's no longer that requirement. She quit all these committees that she was on, because now when she used to go before, there were 60 or 70 people came now to the meeting. Now there's what, 10? Now there's eight. Really? Now there's eight, and now, now they took their son out of the school, you know, because there's no, no longer what it was cracked up to be before. But the advantage is that, I mean, would you ever believe that you were going to you were going to school and you were having trouble with math that a teacher would go to your house after school and help you with math? Where does that happen? Just In a child's ask school? around. At a child's yeah. school. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's just I don't. I don't know what the solutions are. Well, you Dan know, McKee you, started the charter school. Yeah, yeah, the, the Blackstone, Blackstone Valley. Blackstone Valley, that, and that, that, I saw. Correct. I I've been there with him a couple of yeah, years. Yeah, and yeah. the graduation is unbelievable. These yeah. are all these kids going to this college and yes. that college yeah. and this college. Yeah, that that's where my grandson went to, the, the Blackstone Valley Prep, and, uh, and we were we were thrilled. You know, he was a smart kid anyway, but uh, they they really pushed him along. You know, and they. they Expected a lot of them out of right. them, and they got a lot out of them. But the parents were there at every single meeting. And uh, one time, what, his dad went uh, the parent-teacher conference, and only people that were having problems were invited to the parent-teacher conference. The parents of the kids that were having a little trouble. And he, Ray, Raymond, wasn't having any trouble, but it, the father went anyway. And the principal at the time, the woman, said, Mr. So-and-so, what are you doing here? Right. He said, well, I came to see how my son was doing in math. And the, the principal said, Mr. So-and-so, do you realize how smart your son is? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be there. <laughs> and it wasn't, you know, I mean, 
to end up to get a full scholarship to Holy Cross, so he's got to be a, a pretty smart kid. We're really proud of him, you know. He's, uh, and he's doing really good at Holy Cross also. So, you know, they do, they do a good job. Like, achievement first. Those charter schools, they weren't meant to be this big permanent education system. They were meant to be experimental places. Right where they tried all these different projects that weren't see, working that, that, that see which ones work the best right. for the school system. Well, in Providence, Achievement First is better than Barrington, East Greenwich, any place. The, the scores of those kids. And they're from inner city right. kids that, that everybody would say would never amount to a thing. Right. And they're making something out of them. But the Providence school system hasn't adopted any of that stuff. You know, I, I was just on the radio yesterday about all this, and you can tell I'm at like the height of frustration with all this. <laughs> but I, I'm just Joe, an average guy mm -hmm. from Lincoln. I'm retired, so I get time to see a lot of other stuff, read right. a lot of papers and stuff. And I just, there's so many things that aren't right. And pro the Providence school system, The scores, the scores have gone down continually. Now, now listen to the this. reading scores are atrocious, Absol yeah. absolutely yep. atrocious, beyond atrocious. They're tested in the third, fifth, eighth, and eleventh grade. Right, right. So, every year, the scores go down from the third grade to the fifth grade. The scores go down fifth to eighth, so on and so forth. They go down. At the same time as they're going down like that. They want more money. No, no. Well, yeah, that's of course they want more money. But you're reading in Sunday's paper about how proud they are of the graduation rates going up by five points. Now, if the scores have gone down right. and they were atrocious in the third grade. Well, they grade, won't keep anybody back. Yeah. Third, fifth, eighth, and eleventh grades. If they continue went down, how in the hell is somebody all of a sudden able to graduate if they, can't, if they can't cut the mustard in the 11th grade. Right. And the new superintendent, I'm tickled to death about her because of her, all her, her background and her qualifications, but I have a kind of a question about something she just did. But she started out her tenure here, and she said at a big announcement, she was there to improve the scores for every child in a school in the state of Rhode Island. Right. Well, kudos to her for saying that. Sure. And everybody in the press. Yeah, but she's only a superintendent of Providence schools. No, no, no. She's the commissioner of education oh, for the oh, state okay. of Rhode Island. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the superintendent of Providence. The, I think I did say superintendent. But she said every child in the state of Rhode Island. Now, when you read the press, you rarely see that she said that. Right. It goes right down to... The ESL students in Providence and Central Falls and Pawtucket and all the problems they're having and what she's going to do to correct them. Well, that's not what she said she was going to do. That wasn't her intention. That's included in her statement, but that wasn't what her primary goal for coming to Rhode Island was, right. to, to revamp the EL system in the state of Rhode Island. But she was just quoted only last week, well, maybe the end of the week before that, she said that she visited a ninth grade in Providence and discovered that the teachers were using a fifth grade curriculum. Cut it out. That's what she said. Wow. Five years ago, before this guy Ma took over the Providence school system, Susan Lucy was the superintendent of schools in Providence. And she was asked, quoted in the journal, asked, what's the biggest problem you see in the Providence school system? She said, the biggest problem I see in the Providence school system is the large number of students arriving in our ninth grades only able to function at a fifth grade level. Now, if you're the superintendent of schools, how in the hell can you make that statement without having some solution behind you for the next question, to answer the next question? 
and there was no solution right. to the problem. But she just she said that. So that's five so years ago. She's throwing her hands up, in other words. Yes. Is that what you're saying? That's five, ye five years ago. She said the same thing as this, the new commissioner of education just discovered was still going on in Providence. So it's no wonder that 74% of the kids showing up at CCRI needs to, that have graduated from high schools in Rhode Island need some sort of remedial training. Right. 74%. That's unbelievable. Yeah. That, that's really yep. unbelievable. Yep. Now, now tell, tell me this. If I know that statistic, you know that statistic. People have known that for a long time. People have known that Providence is teaching the fifth grade curriculum in the ninth grade for a long time. Why haven't there been 5, 10, 20, 30 teachers that are dedicated teachers, and a lot of them are dedicated that are going through the motions every day, why haven't they organized a little group and get in the face of everybody and say, we're not doing this anymore. I'm not coming in and teaching my lessons to the wall while the kids' are, desks are facing the other direction because they don't want to hear it. Right. I'm not coming in here every day and stepping around the rat feces that's all over the floor. I'm not coming in here every day and holding my nose because a sewer pipe is coming out of the, in the gym on the floor. What, what, how, how do they not do that? And what I believe the cause of that is, is the administration of all of that has told those teachers to keep your mouth shut really? if you want to keep your job. Keep your mouth shut if you want to keep your job. And well, I don't think you're worried about that. They, you can't fire a teacher in this state. Well, that's what happens. What happens if they? When one of the things happens when they speak up, not only could they be subjected to the firing process, the the people that don't want to make any waves, that just want to go along to get along, every day, would ostracize those teachers. Oh, absolutely. They'd be. Like out in the hallway, they wouldn't be able. They wouldn't be invited to things and right, all that stuff right. because they spoke up about what's wrong. And I showed you this thing before, and this is something that our organization did, Rob. I don't know if they can get a picture that, of that, that or that, not. Now this is we'll get, get a shot of it. What camera do we have? Right, I'll put it right here. Go ahead, all talk right. about it. That's a flyer. Five thousand of them I passed out at different places. And what it says is help wanted. Active and retired teachers, doctors, nurses, policemen, and firemen. Please come forward to help expose the tremendous abuses and costs perpetrated on the citizens of Rhode Island by illegal aliens. We ask that you call Rhode Islanders for Immigration Law Enforcement. Your help is de desperately needed. And the result, now you did and this in what, 2009? Right on there was, with two little stars on the side. That was put out in 2009. I got 102 phone calls within like the first two weeks that that, that, that was out there. 102, and we don't have time if, in five shows for me to tell you the abuses that these people talked about. talked about. Not one of those people would come forward with me and go to the state house and tell them that at the general assembly. Not one out of 102. Wow. And they were from all of those different walks of life. Really? Yeah. One fireman, one fireman told me, and you, if you have relatives that are firemen or policemen or whatever, ask them. Ask them. If they tell you the truth, you'll know all of these abuses. One fireman told me that he'd been to places in Providence where 20 men live in a cellar. 20 men live in a cellar. And all there's no run of water. All that's in the cellar is five gallon buckets for them Whoa, to are you kidding? urinate and defecate. Well, I, and, actually, I, I know that to be true. And, I, and I'll and, go ahead, finish. And and twenty mattresses in there, and they take turns going off to work. And right, right. Twenty, 20 people living in in one place with no bathroom. Yeah. I mean, and the firefighter goes in there, and you know, there's a fire or whatever, and they find all this stuff. You never hear about anything. No, nothing ever. You know, you don't hear that, that 20 people were displaced and the Salvation Army taking care of them. Those 20 guys are going somewhere else. You know, and what, what they're doing, and, and you almost have to
give them credit to, individually is they've come here, and, and a lady from Guatemala attested to this at the State House. They've come here with the intention of working for 10 years. They work all the hours they can work, right. all the money that they make, except what they need to, to feed live themselves. On. They send back home to where, whatever, to, in her case, it was Guatemala. Right. Send all that money back home to Guatemala. They stay there for 10 years, they do that, and then they go back to Guatemala. And they own and a house, and they live, they live their, pretty their, good. Their wife that in Guatemala has bought a farm or a little store or something like that, and they can live comfortably for the rest of their lives. But we're, we're allowing that to happen. There's a firefighter going in a house and seeing that, and nothing happens. There was, a, there, was, there was a house in Pawtucket years ago, and I remember this. This ab absolutely happened, and I yep. know this for a fact. There were 25 people living in a two-bedroom apartment, two streets from me. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't, it doesn't surprise me at all. Doesn't they were taking turns sleeping. Yeah. yeah, that's what these guys, 20 guys were doing with the mattresses. They were look, stand, some Standing of them up. were on the ground, and some of them were standing up against yep. the wall. You know, it's, it, but they know it. You know, I mean, I, I've had, let me just tell this story quickly with police departments. I have a friend that stopped somebody up on Route 116 in Lincoln. Didn't speak English, no registration for the car, nothing. Brought the person back to the barracks. Unfortunately, called ICE to come and get him. ICE said, not only we don't have anybody to come and get him, if we got him, we don't have a place to put him, just let him go. Now, this person is not so that, the, the police officer. But what are they going to do? That's the orders, that's, that's what they had to do. Right. So I told that story at a Republican committee meeting <laughs> in North Kingston. I never forget it, 54 people in the room. I told that story, and a voice from the back of the room says, oh, that sure sounds familiar. My chief would have my ass if I brought one of those people back to the barracks. To, really? Yeah. A North Kingston police officer says out loud in front of 53 people at a Republican <laughs> committee meeting <laughs> that that's what's going on. <laughs> and nothing happens. Wow. Nothing happens. Well, what do, you, what do you think of the, the protest the other day with them talking about uh, ending ICE and ending the border? We well, should yeah. have no border. Yeah. But that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I know. But, but that's, that's what we're headed for. You know, Bob, I'm sorry I'm talking so much. But no, no, that's what you're here for. I want to hear your side the of the story. In the month of May, 144,000 and something Illegal, were apprehended. illegal aliens were apprehended at the border. And by the way, that doesn't measure how many people made it. That, that was my next statement. How many people do we think came across that didn't get right, caught? Right. Who in their right mind thinks because the detention centers are overcrowded, we have to just let the people go into the country? And shouldn't we bring them and drop them off at a bus station with a bus ticket. Now, some of the communities where that's happening, they're not getting on a bus. They're not going anywhere. And the police are having to notify people to be careful, watch your belongings and stuff. Right. Because we have roving gangs in our city because they have no money. They have no jobs. They have no money. Can't they leave have, any clothes on the line. I know not, that. Not, no. I heard yeah. people say that. Yeah. They have absolutely nothing. Right. And, you know, I mean... If you, had, if you had two kids, and, and some of them have somebody else's kids, but if you had two kids and, you were, and they were starving, you'd do the same thing. Absolutely. And I, I would probably do the same Absolutely. thing, too. Absolutely. So, so it's, not, it's not really the fault of the person that's doing it. It's the fault of the people that are encouraging it. And everything that the Democrats say, you know, free Medicare for illegal aliens, I mean, they all raise their hand, every one of them. Where's Everyone the money is, coming from? Yeah, not, not, on, not only that, but don't you think that down on the border they got televisions? <laughs> oh, every, sing, <laughs> every single one of them, you see them down there, they get better cell phones than you or me, I bet you. Yep. They all got cell phones. 
they all look like the best fed group of people in the in creation and you don't think that they get the message right away hey 20 people that are running for president of the united states want to give us free illegal aliens free health care you don't think they get that message they get it, that message before that as soon as the question was answered it was all over the south america that we, they're going to do that give them free health care they give going to give them driver's licenses going to do this going to do that you know it's None of it makes any sense. The, the, but st stop and think of that first thing that I said about the, with the border. That because the detention centers are full, right. our only alternative is to, is, to, empty out? is to let them go out into the community. And I just read something, and I haven't been able to verify this, but that they're flying people to different communities and dropping them off. Really? Yeah. Yep. Now, my question is, and somebody asked me this the other day, why don't they take the people, because the, the Democrats are complaining about the overcrowdedness yep. and the dirty conditions yep. and uh, drinking out of the, uh, of the Toi toilet. Yeah, that's well, by the way, that doesn't, that's not true because the, yeah. the, they have those... Uh, um, yeah, the bubblers that are the attached, bubblers to, are attached to the, the toilet. Yeah. And that, that uh, congressman from New York is, uh, you know, yeah, flipped AOC, it to mean yeah. something else. Yep, yep. That, but that's what they do. That's what all of them are doing now. But why, Mike, their question was, well, why don't they take all those people and fly them back to their country of origin? Yeah, I, because we don't have the money. That's one thing. Well, it's a hell and, of a lot more expensive to keep them there. I know, but Trump doesn't can't get permission. You know, the president of the United States can't. You should take send Air Force One down there, load it up, and, and keep sending keep it sending until, them down until, there. The, until the plane breaks down. Yeah. Until the plane <laughs> breaks down. Yep. Yep. And take all the furniture, take everything out of there, make it like a big transport. Send a bunch of C-130s down there and just fill them up. Right. Fill them up with, with guys from the National Guard with rifles, with bullets in them. Bullets in the rifles. So that would be something. You know, as opposed to, like, with Benghazi, had the Marines guarding the barracks in Benghazi yep. with, with no bullets in their rifles. You know, I mean, the, the, that's what's... What's, we've that's become crazy. so politically correct, and that's only like 15% of the population that thinks that way. How are we kowtowing to all of that 15% of the population? Look, look now with this Antifa. Do you know it's already started here in Rhode Island? People are becoming apprehensive about going to rallies at the State House in Rhode Island. So you could go down there and rally for whatever good cause you thought. If the left doesn't agree with you, yeah, that's amazing. They're going to show up. Right. Oh, they had a guy. I was there. I worked at the state house. You yeah, know I know. And I I saw them on daily, and you're right. They they're all for free speech as long as you agree with them. Yes, and they had a guy. They had, I think I might have told you this uh, on the phone. Guy showed up. A oh, guy was interviewed on Channel Ten. And they asked him about going to the rallies. And he's about 35 years old. He said, I, I used to bring my kids. He said, I wanted to teach them their civic responsibility. Sure. And this is a great way to do it. He said, but not anymore. He said, not with people like that around. And what he's pointing to is a bunch of guys with sticks and bats from Antifa. Now, that, what does that represent, Antifa? What is that? Anti-fascist. And they're fascists themselves, and they're calling us fascists for free speech and all that stuff. It, it's, uh, and they're the one you see them on there. They wear the bandanas across right, yeah. their face and yep, all that yep. stuff. And they they're usually not, out of town for yeah, the most part. Not, right? Yes. And now, now they're getting really violent all over the place. They beat a guy with a crowbar, an old man, 67-year-old guy with a crowbar. They went after the, the reporter there, the no guy, NGO, his last name is. Uh, uh, an oriental guy, for, he's a reporter, for a big time reporter, a blogger or something like that. They went after him and beat him to, he had a brain hemorrhage and all that stuff. And I mean, but here in Providence, I hate to say anything against the state police because I respect them so much. And I respect them a lot more now than I did six months ago. But the superintendent of the state police. Who I just had on the show. 
the, not the new one. The new one, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking James, about. That's, yeah, James since, Manny. Yep. Since he took over. Good I, guy. I, yeah. Then I, my, I think the respect for the state police will be brought back because I definitely think a lot of people lost their respect for the state police prior to him. But the, the previous superintendent of the state police said it was a success, successful operation for the state police because there were no arrests. People were fighting and hitting people with <laughs> sticks. and there were, there were no arrests. They just didn't do anything about it. Wow. You know, I mean, and uh, I, I don't know. There, there were just, there's just so, so many things. And when we go, go back to the schools and t talk about the schools, these are things people don't realize. How many people, how many, quick, quick we're going to go to a, a quick one minute because yep. that's all we got uh, left. We got a couple minutes left. Really? How, how, yeah. Can you believe you don't, you've done an hour with yeah. Bob? You've done, yeah. what have we got? One minute left. Yeah. You've done 59 minutes with Bob, all right? Yeah. And you've done most of the talk. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jeez. How much money does it cost for us in the state of Rhode Island to pay for illegal aliens? $262 million a year. You're sure about that? That's the latest report from a group called the Federation of American for Immigration Reform. 200 the, and? The most well-respected immigration enforcement group in the country. They have all these statistics from the Pew Hispanic Center and all that stuff. And, and that's everything. You know, that's the cost of law enforcement, the cost of schooling. medical care. The co schooling is, schooling is, the, is the biggest oh, thing. Oh, it's astronomical. Yep. It's about $20,000 yeah. a kid, I think. Yeah. But just quickly, come on Rhode Island. I got my cubes busted because I said, can you believe that 26 different languages are spoken in Cumberland, Rhode Island schools? How many in Providence? 64. Is it that high? Yeah. That registered registry motor vehicles provides interpretation services on, the we on their website, 102 languages. Really? Yeah, 102 languages. Wow. But I got my cubes busted because I said to about the 26. They said, well, how many are there in Lincoln where you live? Going. I said, well, <laughs> I, I don't know, but I don't think it's many. So I called up. You know, I'm not afraid to. Yeah. Talk. 11. 11? 11 different languages. 11 in Lincoln. Spoken in Lincoln, Rhode Island. In wow. Schools. I'll talk to Joe and, about that. Mo <laughs> mo most, of, most of them are children of, whose parents work for Amica, Fidelity, right. CVS that are brought here to take American jobs. Wow. And well, the Americans have to train them when they're here. Wow. Well, we got to wrap it up, I'm, I'm being told. And uh, all right. always well, interesting talking thank to you, you. Thank you for having me. Let, and let me know all the people that disagree with me. <laughs> and sadly, I, I, I heard this as a rumor. I hope it's a rumor, but I heard uh, you, you were talking about overdosing. I had heard that there were two overdoses this past weekend in Barrington yeah. that they're not reporting. Yeah, well, that's, that's par for the cost. Par for the cost. It, they, they're not saying that, that that's what's wrong, that, that all that stuff isn't coming out. I, I, I don't know. I just, it, this year, we, I, we didn't get to talk about that. Well, I know one thing I want to tell you. Quickly. Dyslexia. Now, I'm not even familiar with all the things that a dyslexia does, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check on that in the next day or so. There's rumors that the ESL kids, because they don't speak English, they're going to try to classify them as being dyslexic so they can get IEPs. Wow. Well, thanks for spending an hour with Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you yeah. for watching an hour with Bob. Until next time, see you.